I've spent the last week with the brand new Canon EOS R5. And in that week, because I really wanted to put the camera through its paces, I've done some wildlife photography. I've done nighttime photography, sunrise, sunset, macro, sports, even portraiture. It's been a really crazy week. Now in this video, I wanna share with you some of the images, share with you the camera settings, and tell you my thoughts on the brand new R5. I hope you'll stick around. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where you will find photography and camera tutorials. I share tips and tricks. Occasionally I do gear reviews as well. And this video is all about the Canon EOS R5 mirrorless camera. And wow, what a big week it's been. I've been using this for the past week and I wanna start this video off by saying a massive thank you to Canon Australia and in particular, Greg Sullivan for kindly lending me this to play with. It really felt like Christmas when this arrived because not only did I get the R5, but I also got a 24 to 70 f 2.8 zoom lens to play with. But it didn't stop there. I got the 15 to 35 millimeter wide angle f 2.8 zoom. I got a 35 millimeter f 1.8 macro lens and check this out. This is the new RF 85 millimeter f 1.2 prime lens. This lens is an absolute monster, beautiful. So today is the day sadly when all this gear has to go back. So let me tell you a bit about my seven days with the R5. Now I wanna make it clear from the beginning of this video that I'm not gonna be talking about the video or movie functions of the R5 because I think it's been done. There's plenty of good videos on YouTube that look into that side of the camera. I'm more interested from a photography point of view, which is why I've this week made a real effort to go and shoot a variety of different subjects so I can put it through its paces. Um, sports, macro, nighttime photography, wildlife photography, portrait photography, I've had a really busy week. One of the features of the camera, for example, is eye detection. Um, it detects the human eye, it can also detect animals. I tested it on my dog and it performed really well, but I always wanna take things a step further. So I also tested it on birds, I tested it on koalas, kangaroos, um, sheep, even a chicken got a look in. And to see how well it did, stick around, it's all coming up in this video. So the Canon EOS R5 is Canon's flagship mirrorless camera with an impressive list of features that I just wanna quickly run through. Sensor, 45 megapixels, full frame sensor. 8K video, that's got a lot of people talking. Burst mode, 12 frames per second if you're using the mechanical shutter, but up to 20 frames a second if you're gonna go with the electronic shutter. Now this is great, of course, for action, sports, wildlife photography. Dual pixel autofocus version two. So this has had an upgrade. Eye detection uh, and face detection, not just for people, but also animals. Again, this has been upgraded. 5,940, count them, 5,940 autofocus points. The ability to put two uh, cards inside the body and also a Digic 10, the latest processor to run everything. It's an impressive list of features, but how well did the camera perform? Well, for day one, I wanted to test the camera in low light, so I went out to do some nighttime photography. Now I did get lucky on the first night because it was a beautiful night, clear sky full of stars. It was absolutely amazing. And not far from the office, there's this really cool location. It's an old auto tire store that has closed down. It's very decrepit. It's constantly getting covered in graffiti. It's soon to be knocked down, but I wanted to photograph this with the night sky behind it. Here's the image. So for this image, a shutter speed of 1.6 seconds, aperture at f2.8 and ISO at 1600. Again, the camera's on a tripod because it's a long exposure and to avoid camera shake, I'm using a remote. Now it was whilst getting set up for that very first shot that I stumbled across what was to be one of my favorite features of the R5. Now, this is not one you're gonna get very excited about. It's the ability to use the RC6 remote. The R5 has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. So of course, I can use my phone as a remote, no problem. But by the time I faffed around connecting this to my camera, I could have pulled this out of my camera bag and taken three or four shots. 
This RC6, I have two of these, one in the office, one in my camera bag. This works with every Canon camera I own, including the R5. So they haven't dropped support for the old $20 remote. I know it's a basic thing, but I love it. It's old school, it just gets the job done. Well done, Canon. So for my next location, I went to a place called Cleveland Point. I featured it in a few of my videos on this channel, mostly because it's got a really cool lighthouse. And I thought it would be great to have the lighthouse set against the night sky. Here, I got two images that I'm really happy with. The first image was an exposure of 30 seconds, ISO 100, aperture f 3.5. And for the second image, an eight second exposure, ISO 320, and the aperture was f 2.8, both images taken with the wide angle Canon lens. Astrophotographers will typically take multiple exposures and then using software layer the images to get the final result. But here I'm showing you two single exposures just taken with the R5 and edited in Lightroom. The amazing 15 to uh, 35 millimeter RF lens is playing a part. Of course, it's an amazing lens, but this camera is pretty impressive. Um, image quality is amazing. Dynamic range is amazing. So this was a really good way to start my week with the R5. So the next morning I was booked to do some private photography tuition and once that had wrapped up, I took the R5 and the 35mm macro lens to the beautiful Botanic Gardens here in Brisbane. This is an amazing location and is perfect for macro photography. I took these shots using the R5, all handheld. 35mm is an unusual focal length for a macro lens. It gives you a wider field of view, a deeper depth of field, and on the R5 with its 45 megapixel sensor, the image quality and detail at the center of these flower photos is amazing. Now I do love a good sunrise and I was determined to get a really nice sunrise image with the R5 as the sun comes up over the Brisbane Bay. So I got up super early the next morning, uh, got down to the bay, set myself up, but it was dull, it was overcast and it was even foggy, which for Brisbane is actually quite unusual. It certainly wasn't the image I got up early to shoot, but I actually ended up quite liking the photo. Uh, when I got back to the office, I also did a black and white conversion and I think I actually like that one even better. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Settings wise, shutter speed, one tenth of a second, aperture f11, ISO 50. Now I did go back to the same location the next morning, determined to get my sunrise image. Um, it was a warmer morning, there was no fog, there was a bit of color in the sky. It wasn't the sunrise that I really hoped for, but the R5 performed perfectly well. And this is an image that I actually quite like. Later the same day, I went into Brisbane to a place called Wilson Outlook, which gives you a great view of the Story Bridge. And this bridge lights up at night. The actual sunset was a bit disappointing, but I came away with this image that I'm really happy with. So you may recall that at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a feature of the R5 is eye and face detection. The R5 can be set to detect the eyes of humans, but also set to detect and look out for the eyes of animals as well, which is pretty cool. Now I put this to the test at home on my dog Boo and it performed really well. But I thought what would be really fun is to see how many different types of animals we could test this on. And to do this, I took the R5 to the Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary here in Brisbane. So the first animal I came across is called a cassowary. This is Australia's heaviest bird. I was particularly impressed that the R5's focus system picked up on the eye of the bird, despite having to shoot through a wire fence. Testing this on the dingoes and some more birds. Again, the R5 focus was responsive and quickly locked onto the eyes of the subject, despite again, the wire fencing. Here I'm focusing manual and look how the R5's display shows three marker points, which when lined up, all turn green, indicating my subject is in focus, a really cool feature. Now you don't have to visit a wildlife park to see a magpie or for that matter, a sheep. And it was here where the camera couldn't lock onto the eyes. My assumption was the subject was just a little too far away. 
And of course, you can't feature Australian wildlife without the kangaroos and equally the cuddly koalas, always a big favourite of mine. And here's a selection of images I captured on the day. Now remember, these bird photos were shot through the wire mesh. Birds with dark feathers can be hard to shoot, but this magpie shot turned out really well with the eye really sharp and in focus. As did the sheep image, despite the R5 focusing eye detection struggling a bit on this one. Now I did promise you early in the video a chicken image. Here it is. And here the kangaroos are enjoying the afternoon sunshine and finally the koala images turned out just great, even though I was pushing the ISO at times. If you do ever find yourself in Brisbane and you visit the Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary, make sure you stick around for the free flight raptor show, which is really, really awesome. The Raptor Show was a great opportunity to put not just the focus abilities of the R5 to the test, but also the 20 frame per second burst mode. And as you can see from the images, it didn't let me down. Having got some amazing photos of birds in flight with the R5, the next thing I wanted to do was test the camera on sports photography. So I took the camera along to one of my son's football matches. The resulting images were great, but because of the kids' ages, I can't share these images with you guys on YouTube. But not to worry. I also took the camera along to a cycling event where the cyclists are moving at speeds that average around about 40, sometimes up to 50 kilometers per hour. The Canon R5's focus system locked in on the subject without issue, as you can clearly see in the clarity of these images and the detail on the bikes and the clothing. This image is taken using the classic panning technique, popular with sports photographers where you move and pan the camera with the subject so the subject appears sharp but the background blurs. It's a really good technique. Normally when doing this I limit myself to taking one photo. It's a good discipline but it means that you've really got to concentrate and get that one shot just as the cycle goes by. But if I'm honest with the R5 offering 20 frames per second, who's not going to take advantage of that? So my final day with the Canon R5 was here and on this day I was running a portrait photography course in Brisbane with Brisbane Camera Hire. Now of course my job as a tutor is to show other people how to take amazing photos and help them with their cameras and their settings but this was too good of an opportunity to not take photos myself. Plus it was an opportunity to put on the R5 the 85mm f1.2 prime lens that I was itching to test out. With the aperture wide open at f1.2, we get a beautiful shallow depth for field, a truly great portrait lens. Here you see the R5's eye detection doing exactly what it's designed to do. Our model Georgia is a real pro and a joy to work with. You can follow her on Instagram. We had a great afternoon of taking some really cool portrait photos using ambient light to begin with, but moving into the afternoon and the golden hour using reflectors, diffusers, we used flash and even LED lighting. And the results I think were amazing. So after a week of using the Canon EOS R5, here's my final thoughts. And I wanna start with the things I really liked about the camera. The R5 is a really nicely designed and laid out camera. It has three dials so you can easily change between the shutter, aperture and ISO. The camera is fast and responsive in every way. Whether you're focusing, reviewing images, using the touch screen, everything is quick, responsive and easy to use. The eye and face detection as you've seen in the video 
works a treat. And for sports and wildlife photographers, being able to shoot at upwards of 20 frames per second is superb and will help ensure that you don't miss the shot. Image quality is of course fantastic as you would expect with a full frame 45 megapixel sensor and don't forget you can also use this camera remotely using the RC6 remote, a nice little bonus. So let's now move on to the things I didn't like about the R5. Now for this I had to think long and hard about this one um, because to be honest this camera was an absolute joy to use. It, I'm really struggling to think about anything I didn't like about this camera. It is a pretty amazing camera. Okay, it's not a cheap camera. Of course, it's effectively a mirrorless version of the Canon um, 5D Mark IV DSLR camera, but on steroids, it does so much more. Okay, the 8K video overheating issue has been talked about a lot, and I didn't want to talk about it in this video, uh, but that's not been an issue for me because I wanted to use it just as a still camera. And as a still camera, it ticks all the boxes and it really is amazing. Of course, if price is an issue, there is also the R6, which is a very similar camera, less the resolution and a few other minor features, but that's also looking like a great camera. And I'd love to get my hands on that one at some point and test that out as well. But really the R5, wow, Canon have a killer here. So a big thank you once again to Greg Sullivan and Canon Australia for lending me the R5 to play with over the last week. If you would like to see me feature more reviews on this channel, let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, it really helps. Consider subscribing, new videos every single week. Down below, comments, suggestions and questions. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.